Hey there, everybody. Welcome to 30 Question Thursday. Um, our 50 Question Fridays. I'll be in Denver, Colorado tomorrow at a three day event. So, um, really just kind of wanted to cover some of the new things that we have coming out here at Twisted Sage, um, as well as um, introduce you to some of the new tools. So, anyway. Um, if you guys do have questions, though, please do drop your questions over here for you that are live in the questions tab, if you will. And um, the chat is for everybody to chat. And hey there. Good morning and good super early morning to some of you, Leon. Um, thank you guys for making it here today. So we have... People from all over, from the islands of Hawaii, Washington State, the UK, all over the US. Good to see you guys. Um, so, yeah, let's start out with the heart space. We'll take the three breaths and whatever breaths you need to take. I know I've been doing. Um, for myself to center anymore, I've just been taking in a deep breath and I kind of hold it and release it. Um, and it's going along the lines of really been getting into the crimson circle these days with Adama St. Germain. And basically when you're taking the breath in, you're just breathing in all of your energy, which is kind of an interesting concept that um, <laughs> I'm totally in align with that seeing everything in our reality as being our energy and that our consciousness has created that entire physical world. And so it's, you know, it's in alignment with what it is that we're striving to do anyway with the consciousness work and the tools is to allow this physical reality to be more malleable with our consciousness. So it's, it's next level creation. It is manifestation. It's, it's creation um, right there. Anyway, we'll take the, the traditional three breaths here this morning and go into the heart space. <clears throat> so if you're new to the 50 Questions Fridays, it's, uh, we usually start out with going in the heart space, which is just the simple three breaths um, brought to you by many people throughout the ages um we my sister brenda schnoes calls it the trinity breath of breathing in the energy from the earth breathing in the energy of creation bringing them both together within the heart and then as we mix those together earth sky and you you then are moving your consciousness from the head back into the heart where we begin so let's take our three breaths So just putting your attention onto your physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. Now imagine the heart of the earth and taking in that breath, breathing in that energy of the earth right up through your feet and right into the heart. The second breath, we connect to creation, soul, source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that. Take that deep breath of creation into the heart. That unconditional loving, supporting energy. And then breathe in both earth and sky into the heart. Imagine those energies mixing together with you. And there you're in the heart space. To me, I also like to imagine that that light from the heart is connected to the light of the earth. So that is grounding for us and that the light from the heart is connected to the light of creation. So it's grounding and connecting. All right. So, yeah, so a lot of you guys are, I'm noticing here in the comments, a lot of you guys are just doing that single breath and breathing in both earth and sky where you're grounded, connected and you're just breathing in more of everything that you are. So let's see. <clears throat> I 
I think I'd like to share some updates with you guys first before we get into questions, but please do drop questions in the question tab here. Um, it was kind of a late getting questions or the announcing this event here today, so we didn't get any questions on email, which is perfect because like I say, I was really wanting to just share share some things with you guys. Um, let's see, what was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday that um, Brennan and I did some work with the etheric templates that counter um, the, the higher dimensional aspect of all the tools. So all the tools, they create tensor fields, but what is within the tensor fields is really where the magic is. Um, what is within the tensor fields are what we call the etheric templates. It is the higher dimensional aspect of these tools. So um, it's, it was been about, oh, I'd say three weeks that I was not able to wear any tools. I took everything off. Um, once in a while, every day when I wake up, I'll look over at my nightstand and find what it is that is beneficial for me that day. Um, usually in the morning times before I'm conscious and awake and aware and connected, um, any of the tools were good. But then throughout the day, as I did my breath work and, and you know, and just stopping, meditating, twisting wire, getting in that space, I found that the tools were not as pulling me upward. So in the morning when I put them on, I could feel that upward momentum. But then by the middle of the morning, it tapered off and then by the evening time, I would take off my tools, you know, my pendants and bracelets, and I would feel that I would just go higher. And that was very disconcerting to me um, because the tools are supposed to be expansive for wherever we go. Um, so Brendan and I worked with the authority templates yesterday and we found that there was kind of a, a limiting, they were created in this in that old space in that old paradigm these the third templates are and they're in a higher dimensional plane but we had limited limited them ourselves by our own belief in in the tools at the time that we created that space so now that we've been up here playing in these higher higher frequencies and beyond frequency um we we basically took that space where the etheric templates were the counter the the energetic counterpart of all the tools in that space we took that space and basically we recreated a higher space <clears throat> and to me it's just a lot crisper cleaner um you know and and at first it felt more feminine like but really when we get in these high spaces it's beyond masculine it's beyond feminine because it's beyond duality and so basically we shifted so we created the space here and allowed all of our tools to shift so now all of our tools shifted into this unlimited space a space without a ceiling so now then um, i'm able to wear the tools and they are able to keep up with me in my personal vibrations and they're able to assist me higher and higher now um so that was that was a pretty pretty interesting thing that occurred there with the with all of the tools and the etheric templates so with the etheric templates basically any tool that is in creation as we update the energetic aspect of the tool any of the physical tools that we've ever made that you own they receive the update as well. So it is always updated. Um, so one of the other things that um, Brendan and I've been working on is if you if any of you guys have probably read the the information about the divine I am activator pendant um, that we just released yesterday. And if you read that description, it on the website, it talks a little bit about um, the work that Brendan and I have been playing with. And um, well, I'll take you back to a couple steps back. 
when the regeneration rings first came in, we made the shaman's wand. And the shaman's wand and the harmonic creation field trio, all these tools created with this regeneration ring, we were seeing that instead of doing healing work, we were clearing the reality that there was even anything to be healed. And that was one of our really true first steps with the tools and, and the consciousness work of, well, you know, we've been doing this with the consciousness work. We go back in time um, and clear something before it happened and move that time forward. That was one of the ways that we were working with this um, for healing. But the shaman's wand was one of the first ones that I truly experienced. Um, I had that hiatal hernia, which the stomach flips upside down. And it was always dealing with emotions is what the, the core cause of that was. And we tried for a couple of years to clear that. Um, and so when Shaman's Wand first came out, one day I took it and I just wand it. I just made this bubble around my stomach. And without really an intention, I was just running the energy to it. And a couple minutes later, I went to look and it was gone the hiatal hernia it fixed itself and i could not find anywhere in my creation where i even had the hiatal hernia um pretty mind-blowing at the time and then um so as we've been progressing through this the past couple of years some of the energy work that we've been doing the consciousness work is um and especially recently something that we've been playing with um brenda started playing with this here a while back of of bringing in that divine blueprint and the divine blueprint you know as as everybody says it and names it and it's you know that's the jargon of the divine blueprint you know it means something to different to everybody and to us it just didn't seem like the right wording but it was something along those lines of bringing in your higher divine blueprint into your physical body and basically overlaying it so that it became more of the physical reality than all of the dense stuff because everything that you know as energy workers and healers we see things that manifest into the physical like let's say cancer is an easy one you know, an energy worker healer would see that cancer begins in the emotional body and that it, after it is just there and it's heavy in that field, it begins to filter down into the physical and manifest into the physical as cancer. And so when you do the healing work, we're not working with the physical body and trying to clear cancer. We go here to that higher field, usually that emotional field, clear that, and then allow the body to come into balance with that blueprint, so to speak. So that's kind of what I mean by a divine blueprint, is that it is that higher creation before things manifest into the physical. And so as energy workers, that's what we do. We work on these planes before it comes in and manifests into this third density reality. Um, so well, one of the new things that we've been playing with here for a few weeks then is, is this concept of, um, and, and we just kind of changed the name one day, we changed it to the, um, what was it, divine manifestation. So basically through all the work that we've been doing, the surrendering to the soul, bringing in all of our soul's light, um, clearing all of our past stuff, um, it's, it's led us up to the point to where we can surrender to the soul without as much of the baggage and just surrender to the soul and allow that higher creation be in alignment with more of who we truly are because it is it's that time before all of our the eons of us being incarnate here we have been here for the the old the old school stuff the soul growth the learning the you know all the hard stuff and we carried all that trauma for lifetimes all that trauma with us 
and then that manifests here in the physical. So, so much of what we see here in the physical is the manifestation of traumas through life, this life, all lives. And so, um, because right now is the time where we are gathering more of who we are, our true essence. And with that true essence, that includes like past lives, other incarnations. And so as we bring that in, we're bringing in, you know, all the stuff, the good, the bad, the beautiful, the ugly. And um, so it's been for the past few years of the clearing and the releasing of those things that no longer serve us at this point. And that is the, 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 the big point to make is that we're working in a whole new space and a whole new field. So what applied even a year ago doesn't apply now. I mean, we are in a whole new space. Um, and so the releasing of, of everything and that alignment with your true essence and that surrendering is where we are seeing this whole concept of bringing in this divine manifestation. So um, to give you some examples for when I was, I took this week long trip here um, a week ago. And as I was going, um, I've been seeing a chiropractor because of an old injury in my neck from when I was a tree trimmer and dropped a log on my head and it um, basically causes um, weakness in the hands sometimes and the tingling in the hands that the, the hands going numb because it's pinching that nerve so i didn't have time to make it to the chiropractor before i left and i was like you know what i can do this and so i would just go into the heart space and i would just say to myself i am my divine manifestation and when i say that and i still get the tingles now Basically, it shifts the vibration of your body and it shifts your vibration to where the things that were affecting you are no longer there. So after I did that, within two minutes, everything cleared up. Um, you know, so we've been playing with this whole concept. And when Brenda does work with people, she's, you know, doing this with them as well, is bringing in that, that divine blueprint so to speak that divine manifestation which we're now calling um the divine i am and when you bring in that divine i am it supersedes if you will allow it it supersedes the old creation so so much of the work that we're doing right now with the consciousness work is uncreating realities that no longer serve us um pretty deep stuff but we're really trying to make this to where anybody can step in without having to go through so many of the processes so many of the stepping stones and i know that the majority of you guys that are here are doing this work too and as more of us do this it holds the space for everybody else to just start flowing into the space and being able to work this magic as well. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so let's see. I'm going to jump over here to chat and say hello to everybody. Yay. We've got, yeah, thank you guys for all being here. Um, got some pretty phenomenal folks with us today. So we'll start answering some questions here. Um, well, no, actually we won't. We're, I'm gonna continue on with this whole energy update thing. So it's it's pretty interesting that, um, you know, just so much has been happening and, and not only our own consciousness expansion, but it's, it's we since I've been following, um, Crimson Circle, Adama St. Germain, which, you know, I just resonate with the guy. I, I, when I looked at it years ago, I was like, no, that's it's not for me. And it's not for everybody. But um, I really resonate with a lot of the information that's been coming out. And he just put something out the other day about this time between the 14th and the 17th of a huge shift in human consciousness. And um, it's, it's, it's really cool. It is a deep, 
deep shift in the entire collective consciousness to where people are going to be starting to wake up now and wake up as in they'll be like hmm something isn't right with my job and my life and there's something more out there and i have these passions in my heart and wow i'm ready for a change that's the kind of thing that shifting consciousness is it doesn't have to be believing in any kind of belief system or new agey stuff or even the sacred space of the heart none of that has to be a prerequisite for the shifting of consciousness um but it does help um it does help when you're in a denser reality world um so anyway um hopefully we're not going too far out there for some of you folks who might this might be your first time here with us um and i appreciate you following along um some of the other things that were are new here um, as far as the energies go, working with this new Divine I Am um, activator pendant is, you can read that description on the website a little bit about it, but um, we're really trying to make it a tool that anybody can grab onto and go through these shifts. Um, it is really a quite a paradigm shift when we start working with this chalice energy because we get to that space and place where where we see the world differently where things like um you know picking sides fighting for things um you know it just seems like the whole world is not real the world that we stepped out of it just it doesn't seem real anymore and you just don't want you just don't want to participate in that denser reality um, which is perfect. I mean, it's, it's okay to just be you in peace and let your light shine and it affects everybody and everything. That is what this chalice energy is doing is we see duality that we've always been in as a black and white marble. You're going to get a big duality in the back, um, where you have the dark and the light. And that is, I've always said that has been the driving force of creation throughout this universe and for us for ever, ever since the beginning is duality is the driving force of creation, the good and the bad. Um, and so this chalice energy, which has always been present throughout the universe as well, but it's just been quiet sitting, waiting for this time. And this chalice energy, it's like just a crystal clear. So if we see that black and white marble, and then we see the chalice energy, it's just this marble that's just crystal clear. It's just a pure energy. It doesn't take sides with the dark or the light. It doesn't care about the dark or the light. It sees it has that game of duality. And so eventually, the dark and the light start to shift just by this crystal clear pure energy being present right there the light sloughs off the light the dark sloughs off the dark and they just they they just be in it it just shifts it shifts creation it shifts duality um anyway never quite the concept um but I do know, check some of the feedback, check some of the testimonials that we have on the chalice rings too. And, and some of the people here like Leon that's talking, um, you know, about what people are experiencing with this chalice ring. It does put you in a whole different space of peace. Um, you know, it, it's you step beyond all the stuff that's just not real. And we get more of a feel that that world is just, it's, it's not real. Um, anyway, some of the new things that we have out right now, we have a new catalog out. Finally, 2016 was the last time we put a catalog out. So we have these on the website. They're three bucks because that's what it costs us to print them. It's a 52 page catalog just for those of you who like to have something physical in your hand. It doesn't have all the tools, but it has, um, quite a bit of information. 
So we call it the spring cataloging guide because there's that article for what's in a tensor ring, which is wonderfully copied everywhere in the world when you describe a tensor ring. Um, it's the article that I wrote for um, the Tesla Technology Convention um, about eight years ago. So we got the catalog. We have this wonderful, phenomenal new pendant. Um, it's not an affordable pendant by no means. It's solid silver and it takes a lot of work to put these guys together. So time, energy, materials is how we charge for all of our tools. But we do have um, the bangles and um, get one over the camera. We have the bangles that are in copper and silver. And the copper are holding the energy just as well as the silver in this new chalice energy. So, you know, I, I implore you to pick up any chalice ring, the chalice pendants, anything, because it's pretty phenomenal energy to work with. Um, and then I'll get to the questions here in a minute, but I want to introduce you to another new tool. And this one I'm kind of excited about. I, we just released a package, the EMF mitigation package, because, um, you know, there's so many people who find Twisted Sage that are looking for um, the tools to restructure electromagnetic frequencies, EMFs. You know, not everybody is into this woo-woo spirituality and connecting with the heart and the soul and doing that style of consciousness work. A lot of people are just looking for the simple set it and forget it tools to use. So we, so we introduced that EMF mitigation package. Um, and then for the laptop ring, we've tr been traditionally using this big old heavy duty 11 inch golden fire ring. And it was just a little costly to make those. And, you know, they're, yeah, we, we just wanted to update something a little bit. So I made a ring for the laptop. Um, and also with all the tensor rings anymore, every ring that has been physically created since March 1st has an underlaying of the chalice energy. So the chalice energy is now found in every tool that's been produced since March 1st, but it still carries, you know, like the golden fire ring. It's still the golden fire ring, but there is that underlayment of that chalice energy. So it will permeate through, which is a beautiful thing. Um, and again, it's always the higher soul self that's in charge and is the one who brings through whatever energetics out of any of our rings that is the most beneficial for the human and the soul. Um, so the laptop ring, as I was twisting it and as I was creating it, I had the intention of creating a laptop ring that had the chalice energies in it and that had the golden fire all the higher aspects of the golden fire rings because the golden fire tools are the ones that are mitigating electromagnetic frequencies emfs the most are the golden fire tools so i also brought in the energetics of the golden fire into this but then some other things started happening because usually when the human is creating these etheric templates it never goes as you intended to be because your higher self takes over and a whole different creation comes through. What's cool about this laptop ring, we call it the harmonizer ring, which will be available tomorrow on the 19th. By the end of the 19th, we'll have this ring available um, Friday night. And we're still doing a time study on it, so I don't know what the price is yet. So that's why we're not releasing it until we get our time studies done, time, energy, materials. And so, there's a pyramid that comes out of this. It's a golden copper pyramid that sits oh, about a foot, 18 inches high, that comes out of the ring. And it has a little ball on top. Imagine that, kind of like our ascension pyramids. And then there's a column of light that goes through it. And then that toroidal field, that kind of a bubble looking energy field. So it's the, the torus, that spinning ball, that spinning energy field that comes out of there as well. So on that one side is that golden coppery pyramid. There is also this bluish whitish 
more etheric looking pyramid with the ball and the energy field as well. And um, in that field, that that more of a bluish whitish field is what I in and it's just a, such a good feel is what I've we see with these pendants here. It's it's that that higher field. Um, it's the divine I am. Um, it is that chalice energy. But those two fields are both present in this. So that copper gold field is the one that is working more in this physical reality spectrum. Everything electromagnetic, because everything in physical reality is electromagnetic. You know, you see the Fibonacci spiral and the way sunflowers grow. That's because there's a torus of electromagnetic energy that comes out of the seed, that comes out of the head of the sunflower, which causes everything to grow like that. So everything in nature that you see that is sacred geometry is because of those flows of electromagnetic energy that comes out of there. And so this entire universe that is physical and beyond in the higher physical planes is electromagnetic. And so that's where one portion of this is. That other portion, that bluish, whitish space and feel, that is in that other space that is beyond duality, that is beyond frequency, that's beyond electromagnetic. It's consciousness. It's, it's purity. It's pure light. Um, and it's not even really light. You can't even really call it light because light is part it's frequency and electromagnetic as well. It's consciousness. Um, so this ring is carrying both of those. And, um, and then the other intention that I had that also is working with this, when you put it underneath neath your laptop, it's like the, um, it's like the gateway tab that you put on your on your cell phone that basically when you use this laptop then for your communications the energetics flows through your communications whether it's a picture a song you compose something you write whatever it is that energetics will then come through um, because songs words they are simply space holders for energy truly is it's pretty amazing um so anyway we'll get to some questions here you guys all right ethan which tensor tool is best for soul retrieval oh man ethan i know you wrote me an email on that too my apologies gosh when you guys write me an email i'll usually answer it right away but not in words <laughs> so um yeah just bug me if you don't hear back i'm been kind of bad about that because I get kind of swamped with emails. But I, I when I looked at that, Ethan, um, you know, Wings of Talk comes to mind for doing the soul retrieval work. Um, really, the anything with the harmonic creation field trio is was our first big set of tools to to do this soul retrieval work. And then the chalice rings, you know, of course, are also doing this. But, you know, and it, it just depends exactly what you see and mean by soul retrieval. Um, you know, because there's soul aspects that can be out there that don't want to integrate, um, you know, and that's that's one thing as, as a soul retrieval. Um, or else there's the soul shards throughout lifetimes. But any of the tensor fields that we create, will bring in those soul shards. Um, so, but, but yeah, Ethan, what comes to mind um, for, for your application is the Wings of Talk, and I'm pretty sure you guys have one of those. Um, but you're welcome to email me to some more specifics and we can talk about it some more. Uh, Linda asks, hi, Brian, what ring would be appropriate for my new grandson's crib? Um, so as long as they as long as an infant can't get a hold of a copper ring that's great um you just don't want because I, we went through this with my daughter too she always wanted to put it in her mouth and you don't want to do that because you can get too much copper by orally ingesting it 
So you don't ever want, you know, your kiddos to use a copper ring as a teething ring. Um, can use silver if they want. But um, as far as what would be the most appropriate for the grandson's crib, I would, I would suggest the golden fire generator. There's a two and a half inch golden fire generator that you can put anywhere in the home because kids are so sensitive to ghosts, waywards, electromagnetics, thought forms. I mean, these new kids that are coming in are sensitive to things that we don't even really know about. You know, like my daughter, I mean, she's 10 years old now, but thought forms, who would have thought that a person's unconscious thought forms would be out here floating around and cause havoc to somebody who's sensitive to them. And that was my daughter. Um, and that's one of the things that she does as a gift is she clears people's thought forms, all of that crap that they just, that ground goes on and it just hangs out. And that's what she does is she transforms those. So the golden fire generator is what I would suggest Linda to, to have in the household anywhere. Um, yeah. Oh, let's see. Renard, what's the best tool for sinus congestion clearing? That's a good question. Um, to me, basically, any tool would be perfectly fine because to me, it would, the tool would simply be a spot to put your attention on for your intentions. So if you're a sinus clear and you could use any ring, you know, and I like the chalice rings for everything that I do, especially any kind of clearing of a creation that no longer serves you. So let's consider this sinus congestion as a creation that no longer serves you. You can use that chalice ring and just with your intentions and just waving it around in those spots with the intention of releasing it just letting it go, of shifting it, of changing it. And, you know, you do it in a way that's a soft intention. You try not to direct the energy because you really can't direct the energy of the chalice rings. I mean, you can put your attention onto something and allow it to flow on your attention to it. But you want to be soft with your intentions so you don't want to be like, okay, let's clear all that mucus up and let's do this and let's do that and let's see it doing this and see it doing that. Um, it's really working with the chalice rings. It is more of a surrendering and an allowing of the things to shift. And so, you know, there's obviously the reason for that sinus congestion and you're wanting to basically allow the clearing of the root cause of that where the sinus infection may simply be a symptom of whatever the root cause is cool i felt you feel that and i'll hold space with you for that shift Whew. from ray hi brian i have all of your silver pendants are there energetics here not in the other pendants if I got this, I don't need any of the other silver pendants. Um, yeah, so basically for the like the infinite light pendant, this takes place of that. Um, for the, the chalice ring pendant, this takes place of that. Um, you can still wear the silver Taurus pendant. So the silver Taurus pendant is still doing something a little bit different than what this one is. Um, you can certainly wear them together. And I was actually wearing them together for a little while too. Um, well, that's quite a difference in size there. Um, so yeah, basically this new pendant can take place of, of all the other pendants that are out there. Um, like I say, you can still wear the Taurus pendant and it's gonna be doing something a little bit different um, than this one is. Let's see. Are you able to speak on how Heimdall came to be the guardian of the etheric templates? Uh, so, you know, when when we first were creating the etheric templates, we asked for a guardian of those templates because we were always big on on guardians and uh, of spaces and places. You know, like our shop, like our home. 
you know, there's there's beings that are there as watchers um, that are you know, just like guardians. And, um, you know, so like for the shop, I can always see a wayward outside pacing back and forth because he can't come into the shop, you know, a ghost. Um, and, you know, so when when we asked for the guardian to our etheric templates that we had created, um, Heimdall is just the one that stepped in. And Heimdall, he is on the movie Thor, he's that badass gatekeeper, the rainbow bridge, the guy who can see y'all, that's Heimdall. And he's an Arcturian, um, you know, and he's just an ascended master Arcturian. And he's just here to, to help guard our etheric tools. So that way they can't be tampered with and that they're always remain clean and pure. Um, Cause we've helped other people establish the theory templates and, you know, and then some people had them already out there and basically they didn't have a guardian or else their guardian was just not in, in the highest and in best interest or good. And, um, you know, so, the authority templates is a pretty it's a pretty sacred thing and we we just we always make sure that they are clean and clear um let's see marla i have the silver heka clasp can i bend any of your other rings around my wrist the same way without affecting the energy yes you know you can take a ring does not have to be a circle it can be a square or a triangle, or you can bend it into a heck of class, um, you know, and it basically all it does is changes the direction of the flow of an energy. So basically like a coil, when we make our golden fire coils, it, it's basically a ring, but it's spiraled. And so it creates an energy flow that makes that torus. Um, so yeah, you can certainly bend any of the rings, but um, the Heka clasps are, are a lighter gauge ring, and I don't think we even make a, a large enough lighter gauged ring that you can do that with. Um, the only thing about Marla is when you bend any of the rings is you want to make sure that you don't put any stress on the weld point, because if you bend it right on the weld point, it'll snap. Of course, we do have a lifetime guarantee on the tools. So if you snap your weld while you're bending it, just send it back in and we'll re-weld it for you. Um, let's see. Leon, do you see the potential for a chalice ring to work like an everything ring, working like a tensor field generator using intent? Um, yes, yeah, so so the, the question there is, is about the everything ring. The everything ring, um, when you have one of those, you can intend that it is a tensor field generator because that everything ring contains all the templates ever created, not just ours at Twisted Sage, all the beneficial templates that have been created throughout time um, for tensor rings are available within that everything ring. And so you can intend that that everything ring, this is chalice ring, but you can intend that this everything ring would create a tensor field generator. And it does, pretty phenomenal. Um, so, as far as the chalice ring being able to do that, I'm not seeing it, but that is just, you know, might be my belief structure. Um, you know, and, and that's it too, is especially with the chalice ring, we're told not to put any kind of limits on it. So I would say, Leon, yeah, you can totally do that. Create a tensor field generator with your intention with this chalice ring. I know it's kind of like this uh, this new harmonizer ring that's coming out tomorrow. It's it's one that basically it creates that pyramid in here and you can use with your intention that pyramid can grow to the size of your home. It doesn't have to be contained within this column of this ring. And that was one of my intentions to creating this ring too, was to be able to create something that was more expansive than just a column of light. And, and truly, that's what that pyramid structure that's expansive is doing, is it is expanding out into more of an environmental, more of an environmental field than just a column of light that connects right to whatever you put in it, like a computer. Um, 
Samson. Hey, brother man. See you this weekend in Denver. Um, how does the energy feel from that divine I am pendant? Just wow for me. Felt a big shift from just looking at the picture last night. And that's it, you know, is that we, you know, anytime you look at the photographs on the website or the catalogs or anywhere, is we always anchor in the tool, the energetic tool, we anchor into the photograph as well. So that way, when you look on the website and you look at a picture of a tool, you can get a feel for it. You can feel if that resonates with you or not. And so, yeah, totally. Um, so I've been actually, Samson, I've been wearing this pendant for a you know, month and a half, probably two months that we first created it but we didn't actually create the energetic aspect of it until yesterday um so before it was just the chalice energy and it was just simply you know just the chalice energy but i i've been wearing this pendant non-stop i mean i sleep with it at night i wake up and it's in my hand um so i don't like to wear it around the neck at night but it's always been with me uh, except for the past couple of weeks when i haven't been able to wear it much um how does it feel when I tap into it? It feels very peaceful. Um, it helps me step out of going into third density reality crap for sure. Um, Wolf Eagle standing. Hey man, how's it going? Do you think you'll be making a cell phone tap from the laptop ring? You know, and that's a that's a question too, is to like this laptop ring, and we don't know enough about it. It just came in yesterday, so we haven't been able to play and experiment. And so it's kind of a calling that we're putting out there to everybody to do the playing and experimenting with this ring and and see because yeah, I I would like to update all the tools and um and that's something that we can do is we can just go through and update the cell phone tab be a third template of it to where it'll carry this and that may be what we do so that way we don't have to make a whole new cell phone tab and then this one becomes obsolete and you gotta get a new one we would you know we'd rather just update the ones that are existing um for everybody so it might be that christopher that we might just start shifting these we, we just don't know yet um yeah what's the difference between the taurus and the i am so okay so the difference that i see between the taurus and the divine i am activator pendant is that the taurus was a gateway the taurus very much was sitting in it was like a little pinhole it's like an opening into that other dimensional space that other space beyond duality that space beyond form and electromagnetic and, and male female and all the stuff we see this i see this as that little pinhole opening to that space this torus this I see as that space. You can still get to this space through here, but this is just more automatic and encompassing. Um, and that's the best way I've been able to describe that whole concept and how I see it is that this is the gateway to the space that this takes you to fully. Um, Regina, how long do you have to keep things like essential oil, supplements, and food inside of a tensor ring to charge them? Um, you know, so for like with water, for water to be an example, when you bring water, look at that Samson, I got some really wonderful El Dorado water from Colorado. Oh man, this is beautiful stuff. When you bring water into the tensor field, it will clear it energetically instantly. That's the memory of it. That's the energetics of what the water holds. And that would be the same with food, with oils, with water, everything. 
Now, in order for it to do the physical restructuring of water, it takes water to be within this column for about four to six hours. So with oils, it, to me, it almost feels like with essential oils, it could be like three to four hours, maybe even shorter, depending on the frequency of the oils that you're working with. Um, but the thing about charging essential oils with the rings is that oils will actually keep that spin rate going. Um, you know, oils will really hold that spin. It's more of a tangible, solid spin rate than with water. Um, and so like with food too. So yeah, you keep your food, you know, that's why we usually talk about having a 15 inch golden fire ring or a 22 inch golden fire ring that you sit on top of your refrigerator and that way it charges all of your food all the time. Or you can use a, you know, a ring this size around a, a burner for cooking with. Um, but yeah, I mean, so when we were even playing with like GMO food, you know, we were seeing that two to three hours, you want to sit your bag of GMO grapes in here for two to three hours to clear any of the non-beneficial aspects of that genetically modified organism. Seeds, um, garden seeds. We have people who are commercial ag growers who use this technology. Um, they actually buy giant tortoises and put it underneath pallets of seed. But we're seeing like with seeds too, that it will shift a GMO seed um, within a day it'll change the genetic form of it. So then when you plant the seed, it is no longer carrying that um, non-beneficial aspect of that genetic modification. Um, so for food, you know, like I say, it's gonna clear everything energetically instantly, but the physical restructuring takes a little bit longer. So really clearing your food, you know, you can just put this under your plate of food and let it clear. And then, you know, to for for years, I would always, you know, whenever I would eat or drink something, it would be kind of like a prayer where you would, um, you know, give your gratitude to the food or the water, to where it came from, whether it was a plant or an animal, sending that back all the way to like, let's say if it's a cow, you're eating a hamburger that you send your, your love and your gratitude all the way back to when this cow was first born, all the way up through its life, all the food that it ate, through the processing, you're there through that whole experience with it, giving it love and gratitude for all the prep all the way up to now. And so I did that with everything and that eventually got entrained within my field. So now then I pick up my tea and I don't have to do that because that is entrained in my field to send that love and gratitude back into the tea leaves, the water, the everything. And so um, just to give you some more ideas on the use of food, that you can also do it through the consciousness work as well. Uh, Judy, have you ever noticed differences between the silver and copper chalice rings? You know, I can still feel a difference between the silver and the copper chalice ring. Now, I just like the feel of the silver better, but what we are seeing is, is that the chalice energetics is not anchored into the tensor field. The chalice energetics is anchored into the crystal structure of the metal. And so it is holding within the crystal structure of the metal whether it is copper or silver, just the same. But then whatever the field is, the tensor field, has a little bit of slight difference feel between the copper and the silver. But really, the chalice energetics is going to be anchored in just the same. Uh, Linda, you have silver tools, gold plate. Can you have the silver tools gold plated without changing the energy? Yes, certainly. We've, um, yeah, we've seen people electroplate the copper rings before. Um, and no, it does not affect the 
the energetic template, the, the tensor field, you know, what adding, like let's say you're asking about electroplating gold onto the silver, all it's really going to do is just bring through another layer of energetics that is brought through by the gold. But it's really, it's not going to shift the energetics of the ring. Um, let's see. Let's see, Tam, the golden fire and light wand has been updated with the chalice energy. So that's that's a good question about the golden fire and light wand being updated with the chalice energy now that's something that's really been on my mind to create ever since the chalice energy came through was i wanted to create a new wand but i'm still at dire straits with that because it's like the wand is so much about doing and the chalice energy is about being and so i'm still working with that whole concept and trying to find the best way to create a whole new updated wand and what that even looks like. But to answer your question, Tam, the chalice energy is totally permeated throughout all the tools that we have. So basically, um, you know, you can take this golden fire ring, even if it wasn't created, even if it was created before March 1st of this year, like I say, as of March 1st, all tools physically created have more of that chalice ingrained into the physical structure of the rings but on the etheric templates that chalice energy is still accessible so your golden fire and light wand is still an access point to that chalice energy you just have to know what that chalice energy feels like so you can't just pick up the golden fire and light wand without experiencing the chalice energy and be like okay bring through the chalice energy you have to know what it is first and all you have to do is look at a picture of the ring and sit with that in the heart space and you're going to have the attunement to that energy. Because um, that energy is found throughout this universe. Judy, have you noticed a difference between the so oh, silver and copper chalice rings? I already answered that one, huh? All right, we're going to keep going up here. Uh, Marsha, would you hold the Taurus pendant next to the chalice pendant so I can see the difference in size? Yeah, certainly. So they are quite the difference in size. The um, Here, let me take this off. So the chalice pendant is made with a heavier gauge ring. It is actually the two-inch water ring that that's made from versus the one-and-a-half-inch lighter gauge ring so yeah that's that's the size of the two um it's not that much heavier it's um this is about 1.7 ounces and this is around 1.2 i believe 1.3 it's not a whole lot of difference but yet you know that little bit of difference is can be a bit. Um, I like the leather lanyard with this pendant. It's pretty comfortable. We do have right now the 24 inch silver chain and it's it's a heavier duty one. It's thicker. It's a two mil, I believe it's a two millimeter. Um, so that way it is more comfortable wearing than our lighter gauge rings. And so as you, if you saw on the website, the 30 inch ring or 30 inch um, chain is still on back order which will be coming out here pretty soon um i think before the end of the month those will be available so with this thicker chain this really i haven't had any issues with comfort with wearing it um leon how are you finding working with the chalice rings on water man i love 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 the chalice rings with water um the first time I drank my tea with the chalice rings on my cup, I could feel my cells just raising in vibration. I mean, I could feel it physically in my body, that water that I was drinking from this. So I absolutely love the water with the chalice rings. Um, yeah, most definitely. 
let me scroll through here and just make sure that I didn't miss anybody on questions. And jumping over here from chat to see what's happening. We've got more people joining Chicago. Leon says, I mentioned the 15th to the 17th. I noticed a massive shift in the people around me the last few days. I attribute it to the energy of the tools. Yeah, it's it's been, it's, and you know, these shifts in consciousness that, you know, Madama St. Germain's talking about, he's really talking about how we'll see it more tangibly in, in humans, in society, you know, by June that you know that we'll be able to see more tangible differences but you know to me everything just feels different you know everything just feels different yesterday and today and and i don't know what that is um because you know it, it's as you can look at the collective consciousness and it does seem different um i don't know it's it's interesting times we're in it's it's a beautiful time um and then leon's asking about my heck my heck of clasps yeah these are actually um a prototype of of a heavier gauge this is like 12 gauge our regular heck of clasps are a 14 gauge a gauge smaller um and so yeah we're just playing around with the prototype but that's that's a lot of silver they, that could be a spendy one but today we are getting a cool new mill machine it's it's a mill press and we're going to start making some pretty phenomenal bracelet clasps it's going to be a little while it'll be a couple months before we have anything that can be released but um, we're super excited about creating a whole new line of, of tools soon um, let's see. And I'm just sorry, sorry. I'm just sitting here reading some of the the chat here for you, know, you guys who aren't live here on the chat and haven't seen what's going on over here. Um, let's see. Nora asked, "Does the electrical outlet tab work for the laptop?" That is what I attached to mine. So, um, yeah, for the laptop, when you're using your laptop computer, oh, I put mine away. Um, basically, if you have it sitting on your desk and you're using the laptop, you can use anything on there. The Wi-Fi ring, the cell phone tab, the Golden Fire disk. Any of those are going to be perfect for that laptop. But when you move the laptop onto your lap, especially like I have like kind of a new, well, it's not new anymore. It's like a two-year-old Asus. And man, that thing will just frizzle fry you. And so that's where I started using this 11-inch golden fire ring between the laptop and my lap. And I still suggest putting a pillow or I use my backpack and I just keep this inside of my computer backpack and then put my computer on top of it. So you still want to give at least a couple of inches between your laptop and your lap and then still have this ring between the laptop and your lap. And that's the only way that I can handle having the computer on, on my person. So that's why we wanted to make this laptop ring to be something even a little bit better than this golden fire ring for transforming that, all those energies that come out of the laptop. So, you know, to answer your question, Nora, yeah, you having that golden fire disc um, is perfect for, for using on your laptop when your laptop is sitting on your desk. Um, let's see. And Nora's asking, with the IM pendant, does it balance our doing mode and not minimize it to a point we don't get things done? I would not think so, but part of me is wondering this, so I had to ask. So basically, you know, when we're stepping into this higher field with the chalice energy and with the IM pendant, 
in that space that I talk about there, it allows you to align more with what is your soul's heart's passion, your reason for being here. The only thing that we should really be doing is what is in alignment with our soul's heart's passion. And so you still have, you still get the mundane things done. Sure. I mean, still clean your house, go to work, wash dishes, whatever. But, um, but even then it makes it more manageable to do to me. Um, so it, it really doesn't get in the way of the things except for the things that don't serve you like certain beliefs or putting all your energy into some cause or whatever it is. Um, it gives you a different perspective on where you put your focus and attention and creation. It, it, it realigns us with our higher creation would be a great way to say it. Um, let's see. Christopher, I do feel the harmonizer ring very much. I'm seeing it as a purple crackly energy that crackles through density, clearing it. Though this is only one of the aspects, it feels almost like lightning also. Very smooth, but powerful, crisp, clear, energetic. Feels like it could be as good as a neck ring or pendant too, and a light bulb Wi-Fi ring, almost floaty. Yeah, it fits over very nicely. I slept with it underneath my pillow last night, and it's an interesting feeling right now too. Um, yeah, I could feel it doing something right outside of my head because, you know, we do see that that electromagnetic field is where, you know, we hold a lot of our memories and traumas and everything else. So I can feel it doing something around the head. Um, is it okay to use the Bluetooth ear pods as long as you have cell phone, cell tab on the phone or electrical box tab on the laptop? So... <sighs> We were actually trying to work on figuring out how to create a tool for earbuds because, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's actually a really good way to look at the earbuds thing is that you are a transformer. Earbuds aren't very powerful. You're not very powerful. You need to go into it with the belief and the knowing that you are transforming that frequency, put them in your ears and go on about your day. You are a powerful creator and a powerful electromagnetic transformer. So you really don't need a tool on your earbuds. You can do it with your own knowing and belief that you can. Um, see. Ray, is Brenda going to join the video sessions? I know you've been trying to get her to do that. <laughs> yeah, you know, and Brenda's, you know, she raises high vibration beef cattle and they're in the middle of calving season. Um, I am going to, we're actually, I probably won't get her on a 50 question Friday because she'll get swamped with questions and uh, yeah. But we will do something with workshops. I, I intend to get her into once we wait for cold weather. We're, we got our new studio almost completed. Um, it's over at the t-shirt shop. And we're, as soon as spring really gets here, we're going to get over there and start doing some filming. I wanted to start doing online workshops with Brenda. And so that is our intention, actually, is um, we're going to be working with Loren Gailey here pretty soon and basically doing a free hour workshop and then you can then do the paid workshop after that that because Loren Gailey promotes it and everything so then um, we would do a paid workshop after that free one hour workshop and so and then that's just one of the things but that's not the format that I you know that I want to go with but we do want to start bringing Brenda into this and getting her wisdom and her energy out there because 
you know, it, I can do any of this without Brenda. Brenda is the powerhouse to allow me to stand in my power. I couldn't stand in my power up to this point if I didn't have Brenda. Um, now I'm starting to be able to stand in my power a little bit more. It's, it's kind of fun. Um, let's see. And you guys got some great comments on here. I really appreciate um, you know all the all the things that everybody is sharing here on the chat because people are sharing their experiences um, you know with the tools and and helping to answer questions. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm going to jump back over here to the question side. Um, Christopher, do you feel a chalice infinity or chalice coil coming through? You know, um, really don't know what we're, where we're going with, with any of the tools in the chalice energy, um, as of right now, you know, having a tool that is just, just the chalice alone is pretty phenomenal because then you don't have to wade through whatever else is there to access that chalice energy. You know, kind of like where, you know, all the tools that are created by since March 1st, you'll be able to go in and distinguish that chalice energy and just work with it. Or you can just go in and work with the golden fire energy. Um, so that might be the way that we end up with the chalice energy into the infinity or the coil is having it along with what is currently already out there for tools just really don't know yet um, what direction we're going to be going with with any of the new frequencies. Um, Matt, any new ideas with the Wings of Talk? And yeah, because the Wings of Talk was very much a stepping stone, you know, as were the Infinite Light Pendant, as the Harmonic Creation Field Trio, as the Silver Taurus Pendant, as this is, you know, we're just making steps and leaps. And it's going to be really interesting to see where we go here for our next step and our next leap and our next quantum shift. Um, I think things are going to start getting pretty exciting. I really do. So any ideas with the Wings of Talk for any upgrades, updates? I'm really not sure yet. Um, I, I think with shifting the authority templates that we did yesterday, I think we're going to see that the tools are going to be working in a whole new way as well. Well, they're going to be working the same, but they're going to be, you know, that we can perceive. But the way the tools are going to be working in these more unperceivable areas until we become attuned to and can start to see in these more now unperceived areas. Um, I think that's where a lot of this new opening is going to come to with all the tools that we already have in production that they're just going to be, um, there's going to be more to them that we can access. Um, and Leon, have you noticed people are attracted to the chalice energies? Yeah, very much so. Um, you know, we get quite a bit of feedback of, of people, you know, just like you guys mentioned that, you know, just looking at the chalice energies or the chalice rings, you know, whether it's on paper or in the computer um, or on your person, that, yeah, people are very much attracted to them. Um, let's see. So... Um, Linda's asking everybody, has anybody been feeling a purging effect from the chalice pendant? That would be a good one that I would like to know too, is, is what people are receiving from that chalice pendant. Um, because, you know, up to this point, we've been doing a lot, a lot, a lot of work ourselves of this clearing of soul level traumas and soul level structures 
um, almost like a belief structure that permeates through all lifetimes. And within those structures, the traumas are. And so I could very much see that if a person got a hold of the chalice ring, that what it is doing is huge. It is clearing your soul level structures all the way back to the beginning of you. And within those structures, it is clearing the traumas. And so I could only imagine that there's things that can happen. But with that, Linda, ask for the most grace and ease that your soul will allow you. You know, you don't want to be all grace and ease, but yet you don't have to have it hard. You don't have to go through purging stuff. You don't have to have negative side effects from releasing things. Work with your soul and ask for it to be done with grace and ease and believe it know it know that it can be done with grace and ease that you don't have to do anything the hard way my sister tells me that all the time when i've been going through stuff like last year when i went through that whole year long stuff the deep dive um you know brenda would say just let it go i'm like <laughs> What am I holding on to? <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just been something programmed into me, programmed on my soul level structure of not allowing things to be easy. But things can be easy. They truly, truly can. Um, all right. Some more questions here. Fernando, do you see the tools being made in gold in the future? Well, you know, we've always considered working in the gold rings. Um, and maybe someday it's, um, that's, that's, you know, working in gold because working in silver and copper, you know, we noticed that when we moved to silver, that there's a lot of waste, wasted material that comes through when you're making rings, whether it's the grinding, the cutting, um, having the tail ends of things. Um, there's quite a bit of waste that comes through. So we do a lot of recycling of our silver and of our copper too. But um, gold, we've just not really felt to dive into gold yet, though we know that gold is going to create some pretty phenomenal fields. I mean, talk even came in and said, yeah, just wait till you feel that regeneration ring in gold. So yeah, be interesting to see. Um, Tam, can I use the wings of talk to charge water? Yes, most definitely. The wings of talk is a good one to charge water with. Um, because there is, you know, there's a lot of conscious energy that can be at play when you're working with the wings of talk. You can ask for, um, you know, all that beneficial energies to come through, just like if you were using a water ring and how you ask for a specific frequency or property to come through into the water. Like, you know, if you need some certain thing that you know of, like bergamot, you know, you just speak in your water, bergamot. And you allow that to flow into your water. So like with the wings of talk, when you put your water on top of it, you can just simply state that you would like for all the most beneficial energetics frequencies to come through for your water to carry for you, for what you need. Um, and so, yeah, the wings of talk is perfect for charging water. Is there a future for potential for tensor tool builders to create this chalice energies? The chalice energy is something that permeates this entire universe. So you don't need a chalice ring to pull that chalice energy. You need the attunement. You need to know what that chalice energy is. Once you know what that chalice energy is, you can work with it in whatever fashion you're able to. Um, it's... It's a universal energy, and it's just been waiting for people 
for right now. It's been waiting for right now. It's been waiting for us. And it's time to grab hold of it and be with it. So, yeah, Leon, please play in that chalice energy. Um, yeah, so Samson's making a comment here about um, the integrating and the deep shadow work and now this ego and I are partners now. That is one of the things that we're seeing with this chalice energy is, is that it is shifting the ego into a higher octave of itself. It's um, because the ego for eons has been here and carries all of the traumas, all of the, you know, past happenings, the experiences, and, you know, and it's very protective and it's doing its job and everything. And so now it is basically asking the ego to surrender as well asking the ego and the mind to surrender to the soul, to surrender to the universe, to surrender to its own higher calling. And so, yes, you can totally be a partner with your ego. Um, so Fernando's mentioning how the chalice rings have brought up things that he didn't even know he was still holding on to. So that's pretty fantastic. Um, so anyway, well, you guys, I'm going to jump off of here because I got to go get ready to go to Denver here today. Um, setting up for a booth down there. So if you guys, if anybody's in the Denver area, we'll have our giant pyramid down there. We'll have all of our new tools and of course we always have a few prototypes floating around in the to-go show box so we'll have some prototypes and some deals on things there so um so denver for the next three days and then um i was trying to think we we do have some shows and they're mostly all midwest stuff i mean we have casper wyoming cheyenne wyoming um fort collins colorado um Deadwood, Gillette, Wyoming, you know, so there's quite a few shows that are opening up, metaphysical fairs um, that are opening up right now, and I would love to start doing some more traveling and doing workshops and things like that, so again, if anybody is in a part of the country where, you know, you don't have access to the ascension chambers, the pyramids, things like that, or the tools, um, would love to find people to host host an event and actually on the website on twisted sage let me see if i can find um that page there is yeah it, it's on uh the twisted sage.com and then under about us is traveling workshops and the traveling workshops it's not set in stone how things are but it just gives, gives you an idea of of some examples that we've done in the past for for people that basically, you know, I don't charge for my time at the workshop for presenting, um, but I just need my way, my travel paid to get there. I sell tools. That's how we make our money from from there, and and just basically, you know, yeah. So anyway. The world's opening up quite a bit right now, and it's it's exciting um, because everybody is everybody's ready, <laughs> you know. Um, and it's it's you know now that we're through this huge consciousness reset on the planet, you never know. Maybe we're maybe we're done with COVID. I still think it's in there doing a little bit of more deep cleaning, more rooting out of things. But, you know, as far as the consciousness stuff, I feel like it has done its work. And um, so anyway. All right, you guys. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, thanks for 
Yeah, thanks for being here. Thanks for just being. And we will see you next time. All right.